Write this number in expanded form using fractions and using exponents. Expanded form recognizes the place value of the digits in the number. So 3 is in the units or ones place, 7 is in the hundredths place, and 6 is in the millionths place. So using fractions we can write 3 plus 7 hundredths plus 6 millionths. Using exponents we're going to write powers of 10 using negative exponents rather than using fractions. So we have 3 plus 7 times 10 to the negative 2 power plus 6 times 10 to the negative 6 power. Write each number in scientific notation. So to be in scientific notation we need to have one non-zero digit in front of the decimal point and then we're multiplying by a power of 10 so that we have a number equivalent to the one we started with. Remember if you have a large number the exponent on your power of 10 will be positive and for a small number, a small decimal number, the exponent on your power of 10 will be negative. Order these numbers from least to greatest. So think about the place value of the numbers and when you have a repeating decimal you have fractions that continue forever. So if we take each of these numbers and we consider the value of the digits we can start to compare using the numbers that have the same place value. So all four numbers have a 3 in the ones place and all of them have 6 tenths. But when we start to compare the hundredths we can see that the first two numbers have fewer hundredths than the last two numbers. So they would have to be the first two numbers. Now to figure out which one of those numbers is the very smallest we have to go to the thousandths place and we can see that the second number has fewer thousandths than the first number. The last two numbers have to be our largest numbers in this case and the very last number would be smaller than the 3.6 repeating because it does not have any thousandths but the 3.6 repeating has six thousandths. So in order from least to greatest we have the numbers in this order. Write this number as a repeating decimal without using bar notation. The first three digits don't repeat but after that we need to keep repeating 997 over and over again. So we'll have a number that looks like this. Write each of these fractions as a decimal number. Seven twenty-fifths is the same thing as twenty-eight hundredths. Now you can take seven and divide it by twenty-five to get that number or you could rewrite seven twenty-fifths as the equivalent fraction twenty-eight over a hundred by multiplying numerator and denominator by four and that would lead you to the decimal number zero point two eight. For twenty-five twenty-fourths you can divide twenty-five by twenty-four and get a repeating decimal 1.0416 repeating. Write each decimal number as a fraction in simplest terms. For the first one, since it's a terminating decimal, we could say 54 hundredths and write 54 hundredths and then simplify the fraction to get 27 fiftieths. The second decimal number is a repeating decimal. So we'll say that x equals that repeating decimal 
and since there's one repeating digit, we'll multiply both sides of this equation by one factor of 10. If we subtract on both sides, we'll be subtracting off all those repeating sixes. And we can divide both sides by nine, which does give us something that looks like a fraction, but it's not in the right form because there's a decimal on the top of the fraction. So if we multiply numerator and denominator of 24.9 over nine by 10, we'll have 249 90ths, and dividing numerator and denominator by three gives us 83 30ths. Without dividing, explain whether each of these fractions can be written as a repeating decimal or as a terminating decimal. In either case, we have to make sure the fraction is simplified before we make a decision about whether it repeats or terminates. And both of these fractions can be simplified. Then we look at the denominator of the simplified fraction, and we look for the prime factors of the denominator. In the case of 4 fifths, the prime factor of the denominator is 5, and as long as the denominator's prime factors are only 2 or 5, or any combination of 2 or 5, we have a terminating decimal. On the other hand, when we look at the denominator of 1 sixth, it has prime factors of 2 and 3. So since 6 has a factor of 3, we can say that 1 sixth must be a repeating decimal. The denominator has a prime factor that's something other than a 2 or a 5. 1 sixth has a denominator with a prime factor of 3 in it. Perform the indicated operations. Remember, you cannot use a calculator for these. Check your answers, see if you're right. Why must decimal points be aligned when adding or subtracting decimal numbers? Well, the explanation has to do with place value. If we align the decimal points in the numbers we're adding or subtracting, that assures that the digits with the same place value are going to be added. If you think about this as an example, if we try to add 3 and 2 tenths and 4 and 21 hundredths, we're really looking at numbers that have a whole number part and tenths and in the case of the second number, a hundredth as well. Now when we're adding fractions, we know we can only add fractions with like denominators. So to make sure that we're adding the tenths in the first number to the tenths in the second number, we're going to have to align the decimals so that we are adding fractions with the same denominator. In other words, we're adding decimals that have the same place value. Write the first number as a percent, and write the second number as a decimal. So to change a decimal to a percent, we move our decimal point two places to the right. And to change a percent to a decimal, we move our decimal point two places to the left. If this entire square represents one whole, express the value of the shaded part of the square as a simplified fraction, as a decimal, and as a percent. The entire square is divided into 100 equal pieces, and there are 16 of them shaded. So as a simplified fraction, we can call this 16 hundredths which simplifies to 4 25ths. 
As a decimal, if we say 16 hundredths and write 16 hundredths, we have our decimal number written. And since percent means out of 100, 16 hundredths would be the same thing as 16 percent. What is 140 percent of 94? If you want to use the percent proportion to solve this problem, you have to realize that the 94 is the whole and we're looking for the part, which means that the part we're looking for is 131 and 6 tenths. Twenty-eight point six is forty-four percent of what number? In this case, the unknown is the whole, and the twenty-eight and six-tenths is the part. So the whole is sixty-five. Yesterday there were 30 students absent from Crestview Middle School. Today there were 35 absent students. What is the percent of increase in absences? So the first thing we have to find is how much the absences changed. So we have 35 absences today, 30 yesterday. That means we had a net change of 5 absences. Then what we want to find is what percent of the original amount, 30, is that 5 absences. So we're looking for the percent when the part is 5 and the whole is 30, which means the percent increase in absences is 16 and two-thirds percent.